Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 63 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10 minutes, all things DevNet, where we talk about coding, APIs, or just some cool stuff we think you might like to know. Today, with our guest, John, we're going to talk to you a little bit about Business Ready. Uh, but before we do so, John, do you mind introducing yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is John Capobianco. And since my last appearance, I've actually joined Cisco in an official capacity in the training and certifications uh, department as a developer advocate and as a, a automation boot camp deep dive instructor. So I'm very excited to be here. Welcome to the welcome to the Cisco family, John. It's good to have you. <laughs> so when I first moved to networking from the compute team about 15 years ago, uh, we installed a pair of 6500s with Soup 2Ts fully loaded. And my director at the time asked if I could produce an inventory report for the finance department. Now, this is me as a junior not knowing any better. I did a printout of the show inventory command and happily walked it over to finance, very proud of myself, and handed it to Karen S., <laughs> who basically crumpled it up and threw it back at me and said, what am I supposed to do with this? I need something that's, and say it with me, business, business ready. ready. Business implying, <laughs> right, implying a spreadsheet of some kind. Now, this humiliation has stayed in my mind for 15 years but now with the advancement of automation and APIs and parsers, I'm able to actually produce that spreadsheet without any manual intervention, with just a command to give me a CSV file from show inventory. So that's kind of the genesis of this business ready product or project. And um, you saw some of this in Merlin the last time I was on, mm -hmm. which was built yep. in a Django framework to make it kind of a web application. Well, I've kind of gone 180 degrees and have gone more to the Python command line. My thinking being, could I just give users a library they could pip install and import into Python? And then with just a few little commands, can they invoke, say, PyETS parsers with a Cisco IOS or NXOS CLI, or could I point it at a REST API like DNA Center or Meraki or ICE or RESTConf, right? There's, there's just dozens of APIs out there now, and get that JavaScript back and turn it into a spreadsheet. So that's kind of the idea here is a command line interface with one command, and we pass in some things like the URL or the username and password, and then the user gets back business ready documents. I love how PyATS is always at the core of all of these automation projects. It's it's just <laughs> it's awesome. It's the secret sauce. It is the secret sauce. Uh, yeah, it is kind of my secret sauce, and it's so universal that um, really the it's the payload of that JavaScript object notation. And certain commands, like I mentioned, show inventory, but almost anything you can imagine as structured JavaScript object notation, we can then work with it programmatically with Python very easily. So let me turn on my screen sharing and show you a quick demo of this. We love demos. I want a shirt that says we love demos. <laughs> so before I turn on my magnifying glass, I thought I would highlight that I've actually submitted this code to the DevNet Code Exchange, which is really great for sharing ideas or finding ideas. If I just search for business ready here, we'll list my repository, which looks like this, and it has links to the GitHub repo from here. So the code is open source and anyone can use. The other resource that I really heavily rely on are the DevNet sandboxes. I don't have this equipment at home and I'll just show you very quickly. I've called up the CML. So if we search for CML here, there's a Cisco modeling lab that gives me this topology, which is great because I have two XE devices, two NXOS devices in a ready to go sandbox. In the CML, they kind of look like this. 
And then the other resource I'm going to highlight, if I go back into, let's just say Marathi, there are always on sandboxes, which I don't even need to reserve. They're just answering REST API calls. Or if we search for DNA, there is a full, fully configured always on DNA center. So that's that's my main resource is the DevNet sandboxes. And let's quickly get into it. At the virtual environment, you can see I'm inside of the Python virtual environment here. I'm going to type Python 3 and import business ready. And let's run the NXOS show environment command. Now, what's neat about PyETS is I can do learn or show, and, and show will actually parse this CLI command, show environment. Now, how I connect and how I try to reduce the friction for the user, there's no testbed file here. The user passes in the host name of the device, the username and password, and the IP address or DNS address, and we're going to press enter. And immediately you can see I've connected to the router or the switch in this case. I've learned environment, and then the Python function actually returns the JavaScript object notation, just as the return function at the CLI. But as you can see, I now have five files. The JSON file, which is what the PyATS is parsing and returning to me. So again, think of curl or postman, where we're going against an API and we get JavaScript back. In this case, PyATS is like that proxy that lets me get JavaScript back. But in terms of business ready, now this is the Excel file. And as you can see, I can sort and search and filter and find. But this is this is great, John. I mean, I mean, you've leveraged essentially PyATS. What library did you use to spit out the output from JSON to to X to um, CSV? Right. So that's a great question, uh, Kareem. What I do is again, when you say most of my solutions rely on PyATS, all of my solutions rely on Jinja two templating. So. Mm -hmm. um, Right, every problem looks like a nail to me and Jinja 2 is my hammer. <laughs> so what I do is take this JavaScript and send it into a Jinja 2 template and more or less reorganize this as a comma separated value file or an HTML page. So let's quickly look at this in my browser. And what you can see is I have this HTML table ready to go as well from the same Jinja template. So it's sort of business ready in multiple formats. Here's another format, Markdown. So we could put this on a GitHub repo or in a repository or open this in a browser and it renders in Markdown. Now you're gonna see this last file called a mind map. Now what's pretty neat is um, it looks like this in Markdown. It's just a Markdown file. But using this new VS Code extension, you can see I have a little pitchfork here that says open as mark map. Well, I take the JavaScript and put it in this very specific markdown format that then gives me a mind map. Now, let me just collapse a little bit of this. You can see it's fully interactive and we can zoom in and out and collapse different things. So this, I mean, environment looks great. Here are the fans. I see I have two power supplies, and there's the information about the power supplies. Now, this is environment. We do this for BGP, OSPF, anything you can think of. I believe I'm up to approximately 150 parsers. Now, let wow. me quickly show you. Now, this is not going to use the VPN tunnel, but let me show you something from Meraki or DNA Center. Let's do DNA Center. I mean, hopefully, this works. So that's always on. So I don't need a VPN. I just call in the URL, the username and password. And you can start to see that there is the 3504 as a spreadsheet, right? That DNA Center has a 3500 device. Or I can look at it as that mind map as well. So again, we can use either PyATS or basically any REST API and make CSV, Markdown, HTML, Mind Map, and the raw JSON file. 
So that's the idea. And again, it's um, it's an open source project. It's on GitHub and PyPy as a package that you can pip install and start using either with a sandbox or against some of your own equipment. Yeah, this is uh, a pretty interesting project, John, and something that, um, you know, people go into these situations and they kind of take these kinds of implementations for granted. They seem relatively simple on on the nose when you when you look at them, but they're so useful and powerful um, that, uh, you know, I know that there's a lot of underlying work that went into it. And it's really cool that you were thoughtful enough to, you know, create a markdown file, create a CSV file, create a JSON file. The mind map thing I thought was really cool. Um, I didn't realize there was that plug into VS Code. I always learn about a new extension when we have you on the show here. So <laughs> that was pretty cool. So I, I guess my question out of all of this, you know, blathering is, um, have you actually found uh, that you've gained a little bit more sleep now that in any situation you can generate your business ready documentation? So it's, I, I agree with you that um, here's what I'm trying to maybe um, inspire people or to think about. Some, some people seem to equate network automation with either complexity or with change management, configuration management, I should say. That for some, you know, automation means making changes to my environment automatically through Ansible or Python or something. But if, you, if you're easing into this, I think that really low-hanging fruit and a really good example of automation is simple network documentation. Um, how many yeah. network engineers may be listening to this? And this is a bit of a challenge. Do you just have a show run on a file share somewhere and you claim that you've documented your network or understand <laughs> the state of your network? Right? A lot of people rely right. on copy, you know, copy run TFTP and they dump it out to some location. Now, now we can document our intent, our state, not just the 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 running config or the startup config, the state of your OSPF neighbors or BGP neighbors or interfaces. Um, and in terms of sleeping well, I, I'm sleeping a lot better, yeah, because I know <laughs> that um, in a Git repository somewhere is the state of the network. And, and I, I mentioned Git because this business ready, it really clicks with a Git tracked uh, repository in that if I ran this every hour or four hours or daily, the Git differential will show me Yesterday in this CSV file, you actually had 20 neighbors. Today you have 19. Something has changed. Yeah. And it's self-evident because it's all through automated documentation. There's also yeah. there's also part of this um, that's that we, we gotta mention the flexibility of your output, the different formats that you output from your business ready library allows for um, shops that are running like a Power BI or whatever dashboarding tool they use, Tableau, to import that data and run an executive dashboard that they can just hit and view without having to look at, you know, a, um, a CSV file or a JSON dump. You know, so there is there is that aspect that that right. we can look into. Yeah, for sure. But I'm at a time, aren't I? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was just like to, to build on your thought, Kareem. Um, you're right. Uh, this this is like, it's almost an enabler. So that CSV file in a repo is great all by itself, but we could add a little bit of code and post it to a SharePoint site and make it a SharePoint document library in just a few lines of code. So it really is to enable businesses to have the files in variety of formats and let them implement them as they choose. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, but unfortunately, John, um... This is all the time we have for you today. Um, you're always welcome back, and I'm sure we'll have you back now that you're, you know, we're colleagues. Uh, but Snackers, appreciate uh, you having the time with us today. Uh, thank you, John, and uh, see you next time. Hey, thanks for having me. And I mentioned to you, Kareem, I heard you tell Quinn that there's a SNL five appearances jacket. This is three for me. <laughs> I'm keeping track of that. <laughs> well, well, we'll definitely consider it, John. <laughs> All right. Thanks for having me. I love doing these. This is a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, John.